Hey guys, Gus Mitchell here. We're pulling hives down to uh, singles, getting the rest of these this fall honey off of them. I had a question the other day about what, how do the bees react to not having the upper entrance? These have just recently been pulled down. You can see that there is a little confusion. but nothing major. They float around looking for that top box, but eventually they cluster back up. So really not too big of a deal. So it's cold right now. It's uh, in the fifties range. And these fume boards, they don't like to work too well. So it's taken some time. But here is, uh, here's what we're working for and trying to get off. Lots of propolis. And that frame is broke on the bottom. There we go. This is our fall honey crop. Lots of goldenrod in this one. Good bit of goldenrod in this. More than I expected. I was expecting a zing from that smart weed and uh, I did not get it. I got that butterscotchy goodness from the goldenrod, which is surprising. Now, we started off on a very good note for the fall flow, and the bees were doing really good, and then we kind of fell into a drought. And with that, kind of killed our fall flow. So many of these boxes aren't quite as full as these. If you see what I'm doing here, I try to make a good smoke cloud underneath it to seal in under it. I'll show you here something a little more typical. It's a much lighter box. Let's get this third frame out. It's got a good little bit of weight to it. it uh, they're not really going to cap it, but it's definitely honey. Very viscous. It's pretty good stuff. I think it's a pretty good blend of these uh, different fall nectar sources around here. As you can see, we're on the levee, so uh, it's quite diverse here. And uh, it's definitely showing up in that honey. Uh, because we've had this drought, I'm not even having to dry my honey like I typically do with the fans and everything. I just gotta get it warmed up so that it'll sling out uh, it's so dry that I'm having a little trouble getting it to sling out so I definitely don't want to be running my dehumidifiers and things um, overall I'm very pleased with fall flow though it's been it's been good even with the drought um, and it's been getting pretty chilly here in the morning I think it was 45 this morning uh, warmed up really quickly as it does but uh I think the bees still got a little bit going that they can put down in these, in the brood nest. Um, but yeah, I got, let's see, I got this yard and two more on this side of the bridge and um, I'll be done over here and then I got to get Tennessee and uh, North Mississippi off and I'll be done. So getting close and uh, 
be able to get these treatments on these bees, do my mite washes, get my treatments done, and um, make some videos for you guys on that. But I'm gonna get back to it. Just wanted to uh, show you a little bit on the fall flow aspect and how the bees do get a little disoriented when you're pulling down, but they figure it out. It's lots of bees, guys, but most of these are foragers. So when it gets cool, believe me, all these will be right in there. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, hive stands and the way that they're oriented. You may notice in some of my yards that they're straight lines. I've been moving away from that and I really like this zigzag pattern or arrowhead pattern. I think it really helps with uh, orientation uh, and drift. The bees are able to um, have a little bit of a break there in the line. You'll still get more bees coming to your end colonies, uh, but it's less so than with a straight line. Also with the straight lines, usually if they're very long, you'll have them in the middle as well. If you'll notice uh, with the arrowhead and V-shape, uh, it helps also for the beekeeper because you're able to work both rows from behind here. Um, and overall, I'm pretty pleased with, with this configuration.